today's theme of the vlog is gonna be all about shooting vlogs. The fact that you already have everything you need to shoot a vlog. So today's vlog is gonna be all shot on cell phones and it's all gonna be edited in iMovie, which is just an app, right? And um, just to show you that you have what you need already. In fact, the tripod that you're sitting on right now is only um, 45 bucks or something from Amazon. So everything that we're doing is very, very budget. The furiously tapping of a blog. <laughs> I usually close my day with reading your vlog. All right, so if we're doing a how to vlog sort of thing today, that's gonna be the theme of today's video. Um, you know, we talked about the gimbal, right? So that thing's about a hundred bucks. But this right here has been my favorite piece of vlogging hardware that I've ever bought. Because here's why. These little three legs, and I'll put a link to it in this video. These little three legs fold up, okay? I actually never fold them up. But what I like about it is it's, it's a monopod. And even though it seems like it would be kind of heavy, it actually is pretty balanced. It has a strap on it. And the thing about it is, okay, is like, let's say you're vlogging and you know, you're talking blah, 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 blah. And you, you know, you've got your phone on here and we're chatting and this and that, and we're talking and I, I go like this and I just drop it like that. And it's at the right level. And then I'm sitting here talking and we're saying, you know, this and this and this, and we're vlogging and, and I can, okay, now, I'm at floor level, right? <clears throat> and it has a fluid head on it, which isn't actually very good, but for a cell phone, it doesn't matter. Usually a real expensive big fluid head has more to do with like a heavy camera that you're trying to image stabilize. But most of these new phones um, have image stabilization in them. I actually put the little thing on here sideways so that I can immediately go from because always shoot a vlog in landscape mode with the phone sideways, never shoot like this. However, there are some formats that only take it this way, like Instagram and Snapchat. So I put it like that. That's, this is actually supposed to be like this way, right? But I put it sideways on there so that you can instantly go to, hey, I'm gonna do a Snapchat really quick. Boom, go back to this and then then you go straight back to selfie stick mode. And I really like it. I never actually fold this bottom part up because it's just something you can set down. This thing's strong enough. I actually used to use it um, like at trade shows with a big DSLR and I use it with my little white camera and I use it with a 360 camera because the base is really small. This thing's super sweet and I want to say it's under $50. So I'll leave a link to it in the, in the description. But I just think the other thing too about it is, okay, is you know, your phone has some image stabilization if you've got a later model phone. But just having the weight of it and having the balance of this on the bottom is kind of nice because it just takes the, the most of the shake out of it. Because you can have one of these and take all of the shake out of it, but these have their gives and takes too and we'll talk about that as well. I actually think I'm gonna do a, now that I've had this a little over a year, it's been a little over a year, but I think I want to do a, now that I've had it a year video, even though, well, we'll see how much longer I have it. I might keep it. I might not. But I love it. I know that makes no sense, but it's absolutely the truth. I don't know what we're expecting in a humongous box. Oh, that's a thing that you ordered. Hmm. We got an Amazon box. I don't know what's in here, but I'm hoping that it's stuff for my phone. Ooh, tempered glass in a carbon fiber looking cardboard box. A discreetly packaged brown cardboard box. Another discreetly packaged cardboard box. Then another discreetly packaged cardboard box. The new hotness in the world of cell phone mounting in cars and stuff is one of these. Suction cup goes to the windshield this way. This is a magnet. 
This is a cell phone case. With a ring on it, because I like that prop ups ring situation. And it goes to there, so when you stick that for the vlogging stuff, see how easy that is and cool? I really dig that. And then you could stick this anywhere. So this ends up being really versatile. Blam, there you go. So we put one of these suction cup, check these suction cuppy things out. They're like a normal suction cup, but they have that like micro suction-y stuff too. So hopefully they don't like fall off in cold weather and stuff. And one for the Forerunner. Okay, something I wanna talk about really fast while you're working. Yep. The way we're going to cure the people that don't wanna watch like us vlogging in the car is we're gonna shoot way more random B-roll throughout the day. So I need you to shoot video of just super random whatever you're doing stuff. It doesn't have to have talking on it. And then I will edit that B-roll into exciting or semi-exciting things that people can watch while we talk about other things. I don't get it, but okay. Just take your camera, make sure it's sideways, and shoot video of whatever you want all day long. And then you'll give it to me at the end of the day and I will turn it into magic. So I just thought of something uh, for all you conspiracy theorists. Um, check this out. So on my computer right here, see this little thing? You can slide it over and the camera is there and then you can slide it back and no one can see your camera. Alright, so let's go ahead and wrap the strings off of this thing and put sevens on it and we're going to talk as we go about the things that you need to do when you change string gauge on your guitar. Alright, so we got the strings on the guitar and I got the basic, it's basically the pitch, I stretched them a little bit but obviously they're sevens so you gotta be kind of careful. So I'm going to check my relief again. So I'm super stoked on this video I just shot about using Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top's strings on my orange guitar because Everybody says certain things. So I'm really excited about it. Um, <clears throat> it's been a fun fun one to put together. I just put it together right now. It's rendering. We'll get it uploaded. It'll probably actually beat this vlog up because this vlog will go up tomorrow morning. I'll put it up, put the other one up this afternoon. So I'm sitting here looking at YouTube analytics and something really interesting. If you, if you have a YouTube channel, you need to keep an eye on this stuff because it's all about capturing audience's attention. So there's some really surprising things about the Music and Mascara YouTube channel. It's very new and you know we need to keep growing it. But even already there's some pretty surprising things. It is 5149% male to female audience. Okay? Which is weird because our most popular video is the instant pot video. So maybe we need to do some more cooking stuff. That might be interesting. And we're not live. <laughs> yeah, we need a hundred subscribers. Because so that... I want a vanity URL. Okay. So one thing, one point I want to cover today that I've been learning um, as we've kind of changed our focus on social media mm -hmm. instead of just like posting in groups all the time and all that I've been kind of tightening up on where we share content uh, not becoming such a commodity and one of the things that I actually have been getting con in conversations with people about lately are the fact that if you're more select about selective about your audience and you're not just blasting stuff out there but you're actually targeting an audience the audience is actually smaller, but far more effective. And I am really finding that. So let's say in the old Dylan ways of doing things, I would put my video in the video that I have today. I would put that video in 15 groups on Facebook or something. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily spamming because it was video content that was relevant and people did appreciate it, okay? 
and I would get, <clears throat> let's call it 10,000 views um, in a day. So now I mostly just share that stuff on my own pages and maybe a couple of places where it's the most relevant. So today I shared it in two groups other than my own page and my own group, just two. I will get probably a third of the views in 24 hours that I would have gotten before. Mm -hmm. And some people would say, well, you should, I mean, you would rather be in front of 10,000 people than in front of 1,000 people or 2,000 people. Not true, because the audience that I'm in front of right now, I have a higher engagement rate. The conversation is real. Just because my video goes in front of somebody and because they see it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the correct audience for me. And just throwing it out there randomly is a lot of work and time and resources. And when you target it, the audience will be smaller, but the conversion rate will be higher and it will be, it will work out better. It's smaller for now. Don't really right, and and of course that will organically yeah, grow. You but want to be in front of the right people. And don't get me wrong, this is thinking much longer game. This is not, right. you know, it is gonna take longer. But I already, in the last thirty to sixty days of doing things a little differently, can feel. And today was an excellent example of that. Can feel the engagement quality higher and so if we talk about what we were talking about about engagement bait and stuff the other day in our other live video in our live video the quality of engagement is what is important right that's what Facebook is focusing on that's what I've been focusing on and I can definitely tell a difference